Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel, Matt and Sarah's World. I'm Sarah, and this is Ebony Lights. Um, it's been on itch for a little while. Um, I downloaded it last year sometime. Um, but the developer has been working really, really hard to get it fully released and I've been patiently waiting. Um, I don't know when it was actually fully released because as you know we've been away from the channel for a while. Um, but on coming back to the channel I found out it is now fully released and I'm interested to see what it's about. So, everything I've read on it sounds really interesting and I'm excited to find out more. So, here we go. Um, the only info it gives on here is that it's some kind of mystery. Um, torn from her home, an unfortunate soul found herself caught in an old and buried secret. Um, the violent elves who claim poison within her have imprisoned her on Stormy Island, some eager to see what will become of her others eager to keep their secrets safe. Sounds really interesting. Okay. Ooh, ah. Hello. Hey, yeah, you. Should we just leave that as the word on my eyes? Okay. Aha! So there's a lot of hair around there. Uh, hairstyle. Uh, do I have to have long hair? Apparently I have to have long hair. Okay, that's it. I don't mind that. That's quite nice. Hair colour. Uh, black's okay. Eye colour. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, blue. Skin colour. Interesting. Ah, okay. Oh, very. I think I'm going to go for white. I like that. Although her eye colour doesn't go when I do it like that. That goes better with that one. Sorry. Um, I'm going to keep her... <coughs> I don't like the name. I'm just going to call her... Alicia. We're not going to bother with her last name. Select a disposition. I wasn't expecting there. It's not a niche game. Attractive and likable, clever and observant, resilient and determined. I like this because it's a port. But I like the clever and observant, although that is definitely not me, so. Resilient and determined. Resilient and stubborn is me. So I guess we're close. There was once a tomb that buried only the living. People who built the tomb were plagued with a terrible affliction, but before the affliction could consume them, they sealed the plague away in the body of a creature. itself was kind and gentle, so very much so that in the great nobility of its heart it had accepted its fate without complaint. Okay. But the people were afraid that one day the creature would escape from the tomb and the affliction would return. So they gathered their remaining warriors and made their warriors into guardians. The guardians were to swear an oath. They would guard the tomb for as long as there was need, even should that need be endless. They entered the tomb with the creature and sealed themselves within, unaware of what they had promised. Years stretched on and the guardians stood vigil. 
the affliction no longer threatens the people. And so, as people often do, they forgot. But deep where the light could no longer reach, the warrior's conviction had begun to wane. Their vow had come with a terrible cost, and the task was simply too much to bear. But who can truly comprehend the unending? Duty had become a torment, and in time they were consumed by desperation. They, le- they yearned for light, and they despised darkness. I got goosebumps. Ooh, I'm liking this. They longed for the glow and warmth of the sun. Soon their desperation became rage, and then they betrayed the creature. I like that. Oh wow, what's that? Just the op- that's the opening. Ah, they clawed out of the earth and blinded by the sun, they unleashed a forgotten affliction alongside themselves. Vanya J- Vanya Guffle, are you done? Alicia Guffle, yes. Ah, oh, she checked her last name, okay. In Edric. Stories are usually relished. What else is there to do with an idle mind? And what was I to take from this miserable little tale, Alicia? Oh. Ooh, 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 it's a choices one. Um, 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 I never trust anyone. Fools make foolish oaths. Darkness cannot be sealed away. Nothing, just passing the time. Fools make foolish oaths. It is is it little wonder in the end, isn't it? I volunteer for an eternity of darkness and surprise be me. Here I am, consumed by regret. I see. You have much to do, Alicia. Go on, get to work. You can be real on the quick menu here. Settings, auto forward. I'm assuming fast forward, but I can't see. Compendium. Oh, there's a save. Fabulous. So at some point, if I need to, I can save. Um. Hello, going. That's pretty. On my way into the village, I discovered that Edric had visitors. It is rare to see outsiders here, but these men were an exception. They came just often enough that we were no longer surprised by them. Most of the time they kept to themselves. But even the friendliest of their number would grow evasive and choose words very carefully if asked too many questions. Luckily, for their dislike of meddling, we dislike change. We left each other be and suited one another fine. As it would happen, I was caught in a conversation with one of our visitors, Rylan, a crew member of the Serpentine. The most beautiful ship man dared dream of. Not that I had anything to compare with, nor the width to disagree. New Codex, the Serpentine. What is it? Spice, my dear. But from where? These are very well drawn. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I trust you. 
You're not sure where you stole it. You can't. You tell me anything about it. Well, then why should I care about? I like the first one. All the plundering begins to get hazy after a while, does it? Alicia, such a suspicious mind. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna press the issue. I really prefer to have at least a slight idea of what I'm getting when I trade. I realise this is an eccentricity of mine, but bear with me. Oh, surely you can guess why it might be difficult for me to give give you details. Why you might not be better? Why you might be better off not knowing? And that is exactly why I want to know where it came from. I don't know if I want to be involved in whatever this is. I like it. Calm down. It's nothing that scandalous, my dear. It is just spice. And a modest amount at that. I, obtain, I obtained it along with a few other equally mundane trinkets. I don't think I trust you. Uh-huh. Besides, you really care where I got it. Yes, yeah, she does. Yes. Of course I care. Morality aside, ill-gotten gains have dangerous consequences. See? Look at you, concerned and worked up. Well, that's your fault. You're not taking this seriously. That isn't true. I'm only certain you have nothing to worry about. Whatever it is, you suspect about my other dealings. This little pouch of spice was a simple side venture, entirely legal and almost completely worthless. Why are you so bothered that she has it then? So do we have a deal? Rylan wanted to trade his mystery pouch of spice for a few of the ramps in my pack. It was an unusual opportunity. But I had no room for frivolousness. Everything we for it was accounted for and everything lost was an empty belly and there's Ryland to consider of course he's an entirely chaotic element of his own a sailor charming enough now and while I've never seen him do anything suspicious his idea of haggling is probably steal or kill decline I can't spare anything, I'm afraid. My aunt and I play for keeps, you know. <laughs> Don't we all here? I'll make you an even better offer. How about that? No, I really can't. I see. Well, then far be it from me to further press the issue. Rylan turned to leave. I was happy to let him leave as quickly as he wanted. I wanted to ask for stories of the sea. I wanted to see if he had more to trade. Stories of the sea. Rylan, you're leaving so soon? Itching for stories, aren't you? Well, yes, of course. You already knew that. All right. I can make a bit, make a bit of time. Which story shall I tell? Places you've seen, the might of the sea, something rare and beautiful. You want to be charmed, is it? You want a captivating tale of a law? All right. Let's try a classic. You know what a mermaid is? I can't enter the codex when I'm reading this. Okay. A mermaid, a woman who's part fish. Yes, that's it. You hear about mermaids up and down the coasts. Every other village. Every other little village has their own particular tale. Usually, their own particular description of, got, of what goes where to. I'm going to have to take a drink. I'm tripping over my own mouth at the moment. You hear stories of mystery, mysterious, crazy things all the time. And you learn to ignore most of it. But you also learn to keep your eyes open. Because every now and then the stories are true. <coughs> One night the ship was headed home to Lullery. The sea was calm, the moon was bright and heavy. So calm, so bright and so heavy that it was kind of strange. 
The oldest of the crew got antsy and began pacing the deck, fidgeting and twitching, couldn't keep their eyes off the water. I thought something was wrong with them, but that was the day I learned to respect my elders. It was the rest of us that were wrong. A pair of the old men rushed past me and shoved me aside. So I spin around to see what they're doing. They're looking over the deck, down into the water. So I do too, and I see dozens of faces staring up right back at us. The old men started raving, screaming and shaking. Not sure what they were trying to do, but determined to be hollering loud as they could all the while. The rest of us were just staring at the faces, all just barely under the surface of the water. Large eyes twinkling in the moonlight, unblinking, focused. They never surfaced, they stayed for hours. And then just before sunrise, they all sunk deeper under the water till we couldn't see them anymore. In unison, like a pod, maybe more like a swarm. That sounds scary, huh? Beautiful though, never heard of anything like that happening anywhere. And I doubt it'll ever happen again. And if they weren't the most captivating faces. Hey, are you uh, sure that all actually happened? <laughs> Mostly sure. It was some kind of dream or drunken visage. I'm not the only one who had it. Hmm, well, there's your story, my dear. You know, Ryden reached forward and took one of the small packs at my hips. This sort of looks like August design. August, it's a simple pack, give it back. Hey, calm down here. I was just thinking it was strange. Goodbye, Alicia. See you tomorrow, huh? Now is not the time for an itchy nose. Aunt Vanya? No one answered back. Our hut was humble, though I understand. I understood this only in the way that I understood elsewhere. People kept massive fields, servants, and livestock. But elsewhere was elsewhere. Here in Edric, our hope was something to be proud of. No reason to feel shame or envy. Aunt Vanya was in fact very proud of our hut. But looking at it, the only thing I could see was fence in need of mending. It had been threatening to give way for weeks, though nothing new. It had been in one state of disrepair, <coughs> disrepair or the next since I was a child. Kick it, try to fix it. It's moving over there. There was something. Oh, there's bugs! That. It isn't. It's in the game. It is in the game, it's not on my PC. Oh wow! So it's not all still. There's little bits that move. <laughs> that that's freaky. Because it just I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. Right. Um kick it, try to fix it for the twenty two hundred and thirty seven time, ignore it. Shambled French was immortal in, in its decay, immune to both destruction and res restoration. I knew better. There was a soft ruffling of leaves from somewhere behind me. What are you doing? Hello, Aunt Vanya. She doesn't look like she'll take me. Find anything interesting? No, you didn't answer me. Oh, I just got home as well. You're home early, aren't you? I had a lucky day. Shara took all the ramps bright and early. 
Yeah? Well then, let's see if your luck holds. Switch packs with me and finish the foraging. What? That's not... Fair, save your breath. I have business in the village tonight and my back is already sore. Oh. Then I'll go. You're lying. What business do you have in the... Business? What do you possibly want in the village? You hate going into the village. We do things we hate when they're necessary, don't we? What are you going to do? I don't have time to chat, Alicia. Neither do you. Not with a whole forest to forage. She knows. So far, the foraging was uneventful. I had my sickle, some mostly empty packs, and a few unimpressive roots that probably should have stayed in the ground a couple more weeks. The forest was warm today. It felt nice against my skin. I had a right to complain about the added foraging. But if I was being honest, the solitude was nice enough that I was enjoying myself. Oh my goodness. But I knew the burned forest well. Excuse me, my heavy was kicking off. There was little I would find worth foraging today. Keep foraging, it's all oh, it's explore. Though I knew where the woods kept its berries removed and, they had, and though I had explored what seemed to be every tree and every rook, every rook, every rock since I was a child, I'm butchering this. I also knew that the forest could never be fully explored. Ooh. The sun was falling, beaming through the trees, it was time to go home. What was that? Climb a tree, you're never gonna look in. I hadn't climbed a tree in ages. Hello? Who's there? Who's that? Nothing answered. I was sure I'd seen someone. Yeah, I saw them too. I ran home. When I made it home, I found Vanya gone. For once, I missed her terribly. It's not as though I had offered much safety, not from people. Foreigners did not come to Edric. Alicia? Her aunt's back. Aunt Vanya, what's gotten into you? There was someone in the woods. Was there? Person, a man, I think. Dark clothes. A man in dark clothes, perhaps it was Borthus. No, I called out and he didn't respond. Hmm. No longer alone, I began to feel a bit calmer. Though I was still plenty terrified, I was actually very curious of Ventima. Curious. If it was a stranger, where might he have come from and why? Except for Rylan and his crew. Ah, the pirates are in Edric, and that's probably what you saw. A pirate. But he didn't look like a sailor. Pirates. And what does a sailor look like, praise hell? Well, alright. I suppose that makes as much sense as anything. But in that case, a pirate was stalking me out in the woods and hid when I spotted him. Got a point. My aunt handed me a warm cup. Here. It smells sweet. Well, don't get used to it. The sweetness lasted an only only a moment once on the tongue. The drink had an aftertaste that was quite bitter. Not exactly unpleasant, but strange. I found myself lost in an effort to identify the taste. After it was all gone, I finally asked, What did you put in it? Some of that spice. Some what? What spice? It was in your pack. What do you mean? How could... I told Rylan I didn't want it. He got it from the pirates. No, he wanted to trade, but I told him no. Strange. 
unbelievable. A stalker, an aunt who puts unidentified spice in my drinks without telling me, and an indefensible hut. I went to bed in a foul mood. I fell asleep quickly, quicker than usual. Where is it? Unfortunately, I didn't wake gently. You're going mad on me, girl. Not just yet. No, I think not. I was having a strange dream, though. What was it about? What was it about? You just woke up yelling something. I don't remember. Dreams are funny that way. What did I yell? Where is it? Everything's certainly been strange lately. I've not forgiven you. I can't believe you've taken to drugging my drinks. Oh, you'll, you'll get over it. Pardon? Do you think normal people do that? She gave a completely disinterested shrug. I like the arm. I'll be gone then. Get your work done, Alicia. You're leaving? Yeah. Not much choice. Starving is the worst kind of death. Go away. She left promptly, gone before I was even fully awake. I stared after her for a few moments. As I realised I'd need to go back into the forest myself. She was right. Starving is the worst kind of death. And if you don't forage today, don't eat tomorrow. Besides, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little curious. The woods seemed cold and unfamiliar, all sorts of wrong. I couldn't explain why it felt this way. Birds made their noises and I hadn't seen anything unusual. I was certain it wasn't very cold, but still a chill stuck to my bones. Each step forward I took, I regretted. I considered time and time again turning back. Yet I continued forward. I was already trapped. Really? Already in the throes of fate. Laysaka Dal, where is it? And then the source of my unease finally revealed itself to me. The stranger waited only a moment before repeating his question. Where is the Cuthenol? I couldn't do anything more than stare. Who? Where is it? The man? Was it a man? Stepped forward with his hand outstretched as though to make a grab for me. No, he definitely wasn't human. He didn't move like a human would. This music's making me nervous. Run. Get out. I ran. Whether it was sheer desperation or truly the best choice, I don't know. But what I knew were these woods and strange as they'd been, my bones knew them inside and out. I decided simply that this was my game and I would not be caught. With all the determination I had, I pushed myself forward as fast as I could go. And then I was caught. Stop making a fool of yourself. My legs were pulled out from underneath me and as I fell to the ground, I realised that somehow the stranger had gotten in front of me. 
I looked up from the ground, my mind reeling, empty of explanations, lacking any solutions. As best I could tell, he tripped me, somehow managing to grab hold of my legs. I felt his grip on my calves relax and sense him stand. I stared at him as he loomed above me. I was terrified, I was enraged, I was going to destroy him. He's a fool, whoever he is, underestimating me is a mistake. Don't do that again, then cooperate. What do you want? He gave a deep sigh. Are we still playing games? You know what I want, where is it? How could I possibly know what you want? I could tell he thought I was lying, hiding something. Do you know what I am? You're the stranger who's born on me, you're a dead man, you're an elf. Things have been a lot. I know that you're someone I intend to kill. Really? Well, we'll see. Yes, we will. Don't start your display just yet. I'm only barely hopeful that all your bravado will amount to anything more than foolishness and I don't have time to put you to the test. I expect I've already seen the limits of your ability anyway. What is it he was after? Not that I had any intention to help him find it. I don't know what a Kuthanal is. Kuthanal? I wasn't sure how much longer his patience would hold, but I didn't think it would last much longer. Calling it by another name. A small black pouch decorated ancient Galian glyphs containing a precious m marrow. A pouch. I've never seen anything like that. I definitely don't have anything like that. All the pouches of anything in Endric are simple brown leather. There are no glyphs. Certainly not ancient Galian glyphs. If you really don't know what I'm talking about, then we are both very unlucky. Waving his arm, he seemed to be directing me towards home. Was he serious? Just go. With only brief hesitation, I began walking towards the hut. I waited outside while the elf went into the hut. I briefly entertained the idea of running, but along the way I had noticed the elf's head turn. Just slightly, from noise to noise. Every bird that chirped, every branch that broke, he observed. I'd also noticed that as we walked, while my feet crunched and cracked, whatever was underfoot, the ground beneath his feet was nearly silent. If I were to try running away, I don't think I'd get far. And I was still sporting bruises from my last go. I had never been in a situation like this. I had heard about the way people are outside the village. I had heard that they were cruel and forceful, irreverent, irrelevant, irreverent, violent. I would heard they steal and hurt on a whim. Life was not forgiving here, nor was Vanya, but this was a different feeling. I'd never experienced it, and I'd never met anyone who wasn't human before. Yet here, first one I meet is now plundering my home for something he claims to belong to him. And how did he get here unseen? Perhaps he had stowed away with the pirates. A stowaway, a large elf among the, the Lallery pirates. Even I knew that the Lallery were known for being bigots. There was a pounding in my ear. The impulse to act was increasing. 
with each beat in my heart. I realised that this might be, have been my last chance to change my fortune. Look inside the hut, call out to the stranger, attempt to trap the elf in the hut, trap him. Feeling especially bold, I crept towards the hut. When Vanya and I had been having trouble with the foxes and wolves scavenging our stores, we began locking the door with a wooden slide. All I'd need to do to imprison the elf for at least a little while was close the door and insert the slide before he could stop me. As I moved closer to the hut, the plan seemed more and more insane. I picked up the slide from the door as silently as I could and then considered whether or not I should peek inside first to see which direction he was facing. You could barely turn around in that hut. But maybe I'd have a chance if his back was turned. Look inside first, go for it, put the slide down and abandon this film. Go for it. I decided it would be easier to carry out this idiotic plan with as much ignorance and bravado as possible, so I gripped the door. Trying to be sneaky was out of the question. If the elf could hear every bird chirp, he would certainly be able to hear me closing the door. He probably already heard me approach, so what was I to do? I slammed it as fast as I could. Most of my body went numb as I lifted the slide to the brace, keeping my arm steady. I aligned it with the brace. Are you daft? The elf slammed the door back open, throwing me backwards. The plank slide lay next to me on the ground. I reached for the plank instinctively. Before I could grip it, the elf had kicked it away. Touched in the head, mad, insane. I'm beginning to think killing you would be an act of mercy. He stared at me for a few seconds and then retrieved a black pouch from his coat. His glare hardened as though the pouch represented something. You don't seem like you're the mercy sword. The cuthanol is empty. I watched as he turned the pouch inside out and shook it in a frustrated display. That's the cuthanol? What have you done with it? The elf's demand was intense and violent. I haven't done anything with it. Liar! I watched as the elf dropped the pouch into a pocket in his coat, only to then notice he had simmed simultaneously drawn a small dagger from his hip. I... Get away from my girl! I was surprised by my aunt, but the elf's gaze remained focused on me. The old woman. What's going on? You two have done something with the Cuthnall. Is that the name of the spice that was in that pouch? What? That's the pouch of spice that the pirate... It is not spice. It is precious, rare, sacred marrow and it belongs to my people. Well, it's gone. <laughs> the elf's temper boiled over. His pale face grew slightly red, hot with frustration. I had the sense to take a step back. But the elf grabbed me and held the dagger to my throat. Gone? Gone where? I tried to think clearly if I was clever. She drank it. Drank it? Vanya! Told you. We thought it was spice. I clamped my eyes shut, prepared for the worst. But nothing happened. Ooh. Right. I'm going to leave it there because I've been recording for 45 minutes. I have no idea how long this is. Um, so far, so good. Um, obviously, this, we haven't really got anywhere. Um, but 
Oh, uh, I don't think I can leave it there. Hang on. It hasn't allowed me to leave it there. Um, the elf had taken a step back from me, who was staring at me in a curious way. Uh, I save it now. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to save it there. Oh, there's a few save slots. That's worth knowing. So. So, and then we can quit. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. I am loving this so far. Um, it's very in depth, um, more in depth than I figured it was going to be. So, we will crack on with another one very soon. See you in another video.